Okay, so where, where, where is your head at? I'm not really sure, but maybe now you have a sense of, okay, I kind of get what programming is. I've got to write instructions with a specific syntax, and I could choose all these different languages and all these different environments for different kinds of applications and for a different operating system and for different hardware. But here, we're going to use processing. What advantages does processing give us? What kinds of things can we make with processing? What is the lens that we're going to look through to learn the fundamental concepts of programming? And this is key. We're not, I'm not, it's not my intention here for you to learn processing. It's my intention for you to learn the fundamental tools of computation. We're going to use processing as the environment to learn those tools, but those tools, those concepts will go across any programming language or environment that you choose to use in the future. So I, as I said, processing, we, it's a thing we download, we can open it. One of the first things you might do yourself, and I'll kind of do this for you, is take a look through the examples. So so you can see here there's a little window that you can pop up that has examples and you can kind of through, look through these basics and some of these basic things will give you a sense of what is processing doing. You could learn about color, you could learn about form, you could learn about math. So if for example if I just go here and let's say we want to learn about hue with processing, I can run this particular example and you can see that what it's doing here is as I move the mouse back and forth across the screen, it's changing the hue of a color that I'm drawing. So there's a range of examples and you'll notice these examples, generally speaking, have a visual design component. So if you're interested in design, animation, images, creative applications of software, processing is a good environment to explore ideas in that area. Um, another thing, and I'm, I'm just going to kind of give you a quick range, as you look through, you might start to look through a lot of the examples under topics. And one of the ones that's dear and dear to my heart that you might look at is, okay, simulate. So there's a lot of nice examples. We can look at this idea of um, what um, of, of simulating physics elements through processing. We can see there's some circles on the screen. As I click them and move them with the mouse, my head is always, I really, this is very poorly, poor what I'm doing here. Um, um, they, they, they have this spring-like motion. So one of the nice things about processing is there's a, when you download it, there's a wide range of examples. And to get a sense of what can I do, what are some ideas of things I might try to make, you could, you could spend a whole day just clicking through and running all of the examples. Um, the other thing that I will just mention is that processing has, uh, in addition to the sort of 2D drawing engine, which allows you to draw simple and, and kind of complex shapes and animations in 2D, you can do a lot of stuff in uh, three dimensions as well. Uh, I guess I'll just open up this one called Planets. Uh, and we can see here is a nice, ooh, this is beautiful. I'm going to have to use this for something. <laughs> but here we can see um, this uh, nice little demonstration of how you can do 3D rendering and processing as well. Um, uh, and you can see, um, you can do uh, all sorts of different kinds of camera stuff, lighting stuff, textures, all the things that you might find in a 3D computer graphics environment. That stuff you can, and you can do with the processing environment as well. So ah, this is, I just closed everything. Um, that is the examples. The other thing, okay, so something else I really want to mention about processing. So, okay, so here's something I kind of should have, might, might have wanted to mention. So we have this uh, ch like crazy list of all these programming languages, and I was kind of saying, ah, okay, so here we're using processing. And, and one of the things you might think, it's like, oh, is it just processing? It's like this toy environment that I can kind of just do a little like experimental ideas in, but I can't really make uh, a large scale projects with. So one of the things that I like about processing is it's both its ability to allow you to get started very quickly and learn the basics, but also you can build fairly large scale sophisticated projects in it. And one of the reasons for this is, is you aren't learning the processing language. Yes, you're using the processing environment. Yes, there is a, a set of, of processing functions that are, that, are, that are native to processing itself, but really the language you're writing code in is Java. Now Java is probably about, unfortunately right now in the era that we live in in 2013 is probably like the least cool thing you can learn. Like it's much cooler to learn JavaScript or Ruby and, and there's lots of great stuff you could do. I mean, on, with JavaScript, especially on the web now and uh, Canvas and WebGL and all this amazing stuff that I also encourage you to learn. But there is an advantage to using Java or the fact that processing is built on top of Java. Uh, you know, Java is kind of, in many ways, I, I've heard this said about Java uh, I can't remember who said this to me, but it's not the best language for anything, but it does everything. 
So if there's anything you're thinking about doing, if you, oh, you want to like read your email into your processing program and then draw little bubbles on the screen for every email you've received, or you want to connect to the Microsoft Connect, or you want to use uh, this physical piece of this hardware, you want to use this sensor, um, you can really do just about anything. You'll find a Java library out there for just about anything. So processing, because it's built on Java, is incredibly extendable through libraries. Now, what are these libraries? And you can see I meant to, um, if I go back to that examples window, um, looking through those examples, there was topics. I could go down and start to look at libraries, one of which I'll just demonstrate really briefly to you right now is video. So under capture, I'm going to look at uh, one of these uh, examples. I'm going to run this mirror example. And I think this will work. Uh, this is where we would edit because it's taking a minute to run. So here we can see, oh look, what's interesting is this is a green screen. So you can see the green wall in the actual camera. So the camera here is reading my image. So processing can connect to pieces of hardware through libraries, connect to your camera. And what this example is doing is it's taking every single pixel from a regular good old fashioned image and instead of drawing that pixel as a um, it's drawing that pixel as a rectangle on the screen, rotated according to brightness or something. So you can see that we can create this abstract visualization of the data, the color data that's coming in from a camera. And this is uh, something we'll explore in great detail in a uh, future video, how to do, write these kind of examples, how to capture images, how to read pixels, how to draw stuff based on those pixels. So the, the video library is something that comes with processing when you download it, but processing itself has a, huge, has a large community of people making libraries. And I downloaded one, an arbitrary one, called the uh, Yahoo Weather Library. We can see I'll just open up this example. Um, this library allows you to connect to Yahoo, Yah Yahoo Weather data. And you can see here that this processing sketch has grabbed the weather information from the city of Berlin. It's fair. The wind direction is 310, which must maybe is a, um, an angle, not sure. Um, and the wind speed is uh, 8 kilometers. Kil kilometers, I became French all of a sudden, uh, kilometers per hour. So you can see then this, uh, there's these particles, these dots that are drawn on the screen that are moving according to that wind direction. So connecting to data sources there, if you have an idea for something and processing doesn't do it, if you can write the Java code for that, you can make it into a library and you can do it in processing. So the processing is tremendously extendable through all sorts of libraries. And if you want to get a sense of what the available libraries are for you, um, if we go back to the processing website and go to libraries, you can see there is a nice list of tons and tons of libraries. And you can also get them, which I, uh, this is not, uh, through, um, uh, through this library manager that comes with the processing software itself. So we can go through this list of libraries, and if I want this library, which is a lightweight library for creating animations and tra tra transitions, I can click install, and it will install that library, and I can use it in my code. Okay, so this is kind of at least a little bit of um, me getting started showing you, okay, here's the processing development environment. Here are uh, some of the examples. Here's some libraries. Here's the th kinds of things it can do. And the next thing I want to kind of briefly look at is just a quick range of some projects that have been made with processing to get you thinking about looking at um, kind of larger scale um, installations and animations and, and things that people are doing. The first project I'm going to show you is called Chronograph by Casey Reese, who's one of the creators of Processing, and uh, Tal Rosner. I apologize if I pronounced the name in here incorrectly. Um, this is a project which I will just sort of skip to the end here to just show you this time lapse. You can see this is a projection piece that's projected onto the side of this building, which is the New World Center in Miami, Florida, for the New World Symphony. So this is a time lapse of the piece running. This is showing it more quickly. But you can see this idea of abstract visuals projected on the side of a building. This is all generative, procedural. This is a piece of software that generates this content that's projected on the side of a building. This is something that's done a lot with uh, processing. Um, I, uh, uh, I teach a class here at ITP where the students create work for a large video wall. Um, here are a couple examples of projects there. This is a project called Beluga. I'm uh, skipping the sound, but this was a dance performance. And you can see uh, that um, there are these dancers that are moving and jumping on tram trampolines. This is a 120 foot wide video wall. It's about 
12 feet high, and the visuals were generative, this seascape, and they responded to the movements of these dancers who were bouncing up and down on trampolines. So this was actually, uh, it's using processing, but there are three separate computers running three processing sketches, each controlling a section of the video wall. So even these types of large-scale 3D performance, graphics for performance are made with processing. Another example of this for the same space, uh, this is a project called Replica, which um, uh, here there was a dancer live in the space with a camera pointed at her and her image was then uh, projected onto the wall and uh, manipulated with a series of different kinds of uh, time-based effects and there was music, the dancer, um, and, and all happening in real time, all happening um, live. Um, uh, okay, I'm realizing I'm forgetting to mention people's names but uh, I will um, There'll be links below where you can find out the, the wonderful people who made some of these projects. So another thing that processing is used a lot for is for uh, motion graphics. This is a great project by Molly Schwartz where she did an animation about eels. Now uh, called A Belly Full of Eels. If you look at this, a lot of this is done with After Effects. Um, but here in, in, in this particular part of the, the uh, animation, these eels that are actually swimming through this uh, underwater pipe sewer like space, those were actually made in processing, rendered out from processing and incorporated into a larger animation project. And there are lots of wonderful examples of music videos that have been made with processing um, where different types of uh, elements that you wouldn't want to hand animate that need an algorithm, a generative process to, whether it's behaviors or repetition, um, were done with code, with processing. Uh, okay. Uh, another um, another uh, like uh, popular use of processing is for data visualization. Uh, I will show you a well-known project by Jer Thorpe. Um, this here is a visualization. It's grabbing data from Twitter and looking for people who said, you know, <laughs> who are very excited about the fact that they just landed in Hawaii, for example. So anyone who posted just landed in Hawaii, if it was me, I wish I had gone to Hawaii. I've never been there, but. Um, my home location on Twitter would be New York. Jer, the, the, the project parses out um, the locations in New York and Hawaii and the time that the tweet was posted and draws a, uh, this kind of arc path from the uh, origin location to the landing location. So it's a visualization of people posting on Twitter about their flights. And you can see different views. There's this kind of like horizontal view now that it's spinning around. All of this is done through code, through an algorithmic process to visualize this data. And you can see kind of um, the, uh, well, you can't really see that, but uh, up here at the top left, um, this time scale is showing where we are and uh, this, um, where we are in time. So this is a, a great use of processing and it looks like, oh my goodness, this very like complicated, crazy 3D, how could I ever possibly learn how to do this? We're going to start with some very basic things like how to draw a circle, how to move a circle. This is really just doing that also. It's just lots of circles, a little bit of 3D. So what's happening with those circles is controlled by data. So all of this stuff is possible through learning the foundations of programming and uh, a little bit about how to draw and do stuff with computer graphics as well. Um, so uh, um, this is a great project by Mary Huang. If you're interested, a lot of wonderful work is being done with processing to create physical. So if you want to do print design, uh, with, uh, checking out the work of Rune Madsen and a course he teaches called Printing Code, there's a tremendous suite of examples of using computation to generate print designs. Um, this is a project that Mary Huang made to create a, a, f a fashion designs through, um, through a generative process. So you can see here the mouse, this is a processing sketch running where the mouse is able to draw over the figure of, a, of, a, of the human form and that, and that the, what the mouse is drawing is then uh, made into geometry which is used to generate the, the design for a dress. And Mary actually created these dresses and, and, and physically fabricated them and, and wore them as well. And so a lot of stuff can, is being done with processing in terms of um, we've taken a look at the work at Nervous System. I'll include a link to that as well for making jewelry designs. Um, you can print stuff, off, you can generate stuff for a MakerBot with processing to, to do 3D printing. This is a, something that you could explore as, a, as an application that you might, um, an idea that you might do throughout if you're following along with all of these videos. Um, also doing, um, creating um, a, a physical computing interfaces. This is a project called the Mud Tub. Um, which you know, kind of answers that question, 
What's the thing that you might want to get least near your computer? <laughs> a big pile of mud. This is by Tom Gerhardt. Um, and so uh, this is kind of also interesting to say, like, you know, we don't need, we, we, what you're learning here might not, you might not need to make something that has this really obvious practical, like, oh, I want to make an app and I want to, like, sell billions of them and become a, 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 a zillionaire, which actually is, would be nice. But, uh, you know, anyway, there's more to life than uh, selling your apps. But, um, this you can see here, there's a projection on this tub of mud, which is uh, the graphics, what's being output is done through processing. And processing is reading these sensors that are coming back in um, from the mud. Uh, there's actually sensors underneath the mud that's measuring the weight of the mud at any point, which allows the, the software to read the topology, essentially, of the mud. And you can see that the mud becomes this controller, where um, you, with your hands, you can kind of bounce this ball around. If I uh, kind of skip to the end here, um, you can see you can kind of play this game here on a separate screen by pressing on the mud. So this idea of making your own physical computing device, your own interface, a tub of mud, another great example of this is uh, the Scrollables project I'll just show you. Uh, this is by Filippo Vanucci, and you can see here is his processing sketch. Ah, shoot. <laughs> uh, which I think, um, here is his processing sketch, which um, if you look at it, makes this nice ink effect. So he's, he's created this uh, sketch, and if I click around here, you can see it draws a bunch of dots and it makes this animation. It has this ink-like quality to it. So what did he use this processing sketch for? He used it to project onto paper, and he built sensors to measure how, um, what that paper is doing. This will become much more obvious when I show you it in a project called Scrollables. And you can see these are these devices that you can scroll the paper around. I'll just skip ahead here. By scrolling back and forth, you can control an animation. So of course, we're all familiar with touch screens. Um, but here we have this physical device, which has real tactile, tangible qualities, real paper that you're scrolling. And you can see as you scroll back and forth, you can play, for example, the game Pong. And this ink effect was created through an algorithm in processing and, uh, 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 and um, controlled through the physical interface. So you know, this is very, very, um, a really, really quick and dirty kind of, I don't know if I missed anything key that I wanted to show you, a really kind of quick and dirty, just quick range of projects that were made in processing. I would also encourage you to, on the processing website, um, ah, to uh, go take a look at the exhibition. So if you look at the exhibition link, there is a, a ton of projects that you can see historically. And you can actually go, it's, um, you can actually go all the way back, if on the bottom here, um, <laughs> Oh boy, this is, this is getting awkward. Um, on the bottom here, if you click on number one, you can actually see stuff that was posted from the processing exhibition from over 10 years ago. So this is, there's a, if, if you want to kind of get a sense of the landscape of what does processing do, what are the kinds of things that I'm going to learn, you can walk yourself through the examples, you can look at a bunch of projects that are made with processing, but ultimately, the rest of these videos are going to vary slowly by slowly, piece by piece, walk you through the fundamentals of programming through a whole lot of graphics examples and processing and that will help you generate ideas and things that you want that you might want to make and that's really more, <laughs> i have only one more introductory video to make and that is a video where i'm just going to talk through kind of the table of contents of everything we're going to go through you could call it a syllabus if you want but i'm kind of afraid to do that so i'm going to kind of just give you a quick overview i think this i'm kind of having a problem with these this video and the last one are, are a bit too long so i'm going to give you a, a kind of quick overview of all the fundamentals you're going to learn and then we're just going to dive right in and get started.